Happy New Year, everyone. A lot of great new stuff is coming to Portland in the form of restaurants, pods, carts, and pop-ups. Eater Portland editor Brooke Jackson Glidden is here with us today to give us her top picks for the coming year and to offer a defense as to why the new Ritz Carlton might not be the worst thing that's happened to downtown. We'll see. It's Thursday, January 5th, 2023. I'm Claudia Meza, and this is CityCast Portland. Brooke, tell me what you are really looking forward to this new year. I think that there are some really fun things that are going to be coming in 2023. The first thing I really have to mention, because it's kind of the major headline, is this big Ritz-Carlton development in downtown Portland. Mm -hmm. Now, when like news broke that this was going to happen... The focus wasn't on the Ritz-Carlton. The focus was on the food cart pod that was there that it was going to displace. Right. I remember that. It was a big deal. Yeah, it was know? a huge, huge story. Yeah, and it took forever for like a lot of those pods to find new homes. I remember that. And, and you know, the city, they partnered with this private organization to try to like fund a specific pod that it was like, this is the place where these food carts can land. And that project took much longer than expected. And in that waiting period, some carts had to close. Right. Some carts landed elsewhere because they just couldn't wait years. So, you know, when it finally opened, it's on the park blocks and there have just been like some issues. Super tricky to talk about that part of town. Mm -hmm. But I think that some of the cart owners, they've just been dealing with stuff that has been tricky. Um, Safety issues. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, they're partially because of that. Partially, I think, because of stigma around that area right now. Partially because downtown workers haven't been returning in the same way. There isn't the same level of tourism. So what I'm hearing is that The Ritz-Carlton came in, they took over that entire block, they displaced what basically made a lot of tourists think this is what Portland is. You go and there's this awesome pod, and then so that's gone, and then the city's like, don't worry guys, we're going to take care of you. It does not happen. So now... But at the same time, you're like, but I'm excited. I know. And so how can you think that's really, that really tough you, to say, right? You're like, after all this awfulness, but let me tell you about, about the Ritz-Carlton. Ritz oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, no, I think that that's a really fair point. <laughs> what I will say is that because there was this really intense response to this food cart pod closing, there have been sort of interesting things that have happened in response. So they're covering their ass. What is what you're saying? That's a fair thing to say, yes. <laughs> okay. I am blown away by how well they handled this. There's a food hall that's going to be in that building. It's 10 mini restaurants, including really prominent Portland food carts. So Barry La Plaza, um, Kim Jong Grillin, um, another sort of longstanding Portland cart, one that has been very involved with policymaking regarding food carts in the city. It's going to be primarily a lot of food cart or like pop-up centric businesses. Uh, Sunrise is going to be collaborating with Magna to do a Filipino project there. What's Sunrise? So Sunrise is a really cool pop-up that emerged sort of at the end of 2021 and through 2022. It was at Deadshot. It is this interesting intersection of like Filipino and Vietnamese cuisine. They made such good lechon. It was like my favorite bar snack that I was eating in 2022. Super, super tasty. That's exciting. It's super exciting. So again, it's like, oh God, you know, the whole focus of this story has been on these carts and and the Ritz Carlton, I think in many sort of narratives about this were kind of the villain, right? I think that they did what they could to sort of go, okay, what can we do to kind of ameliorate the situation right. the best we can? So you're excited about the Ritz-Carlton, even I though- I am. So I will say the other sort of facet of that is farther up in the building, there is going to be a restaurant that's going to be a fancy Ritz-Carlton restaurant in there. Okay. The chef that's going to be there, he is coming from Sintra, Portugal to open this restaurant. He helped the restaurant where he was last- get their Michelin star and kept it the entire time that he was there. Wow. So this is a really talented guy. But talking to him, he's also a really humble person. It seems like he kind of fits the Portland ethos in many ways. And right. that like he's really, really excited to be working with Oregon produce, specifically mushrooms. He's already thinking about Oregon seafood dishes. Right. So again, sort of a fraught project, but I have to admit the stuff going in seems cool, you know? <laughs> You're like, as a person who likes to eat out. <laughs> I I have, it's like, you know, listen, it might be a problematic fave. I will say a lot of Portland talent is also going to be in that building. All right, let's take a little break. When we come back, let's talk food carts.
let's talk about food pods and, and carts. So last year, the dissolution of that particular pod, which was a pretty big, iconic landmark. But I hear there's a new pod coming through, uh, Little Pod America. Yeah, so Little America. It's it's going to oh, be... Oh, it's Little America? It's yeah. not Little Pod America? Did I no. make that up? <laughs> I don't know where that came from. But yeah, no, Little Pod... Now I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Little America. <laughs> Little America. It's not totally open yet. There are places that are still moving in. So like, I think the model here is really, really cool for a number of reasons. If you look at like the history of food carts in Portland, pods didn't have a huge amount of infrastructure for a long time. And that made it really hard for many carts to operate. And a lot of food carts in particular are owned by people of color. It's it's sort of part of that systemic issue that impacts specific populations more than others. So Lil America specifically focuses on BIPOC and LGBTQIA owned carts. And they build in a lot of infrastructure to try to address some of those systemic issues. So there's a lot of cold and dry storage, security, so you're hopefully not going to see as many break-ins. And there is this real emphasis on this idea of uplifting businesses owned by marginalized communities. Cool. Do you know what's going to be go in it? Which what carts? Actual carts, yeah. Yeah, there are going to be some of my favorites, some really cool oh, okay. Portland ones. Yeah, Hawker Station is going to be one of them. What's Hawker Station? Yeah, so that's like Hainanese Chicken, which is sort of akin to a cow and guy. I believe a lot of street foods from like Shanghai, they were originally at the Core Food Pod, which is out kind of near 82nd. But that'll be there. And then Bake on the Run, so Guyanese. It's going to be a really interesting range of carts in there. So really excited to see where they go with that. Cool. There's also a sex worker owned coffee cart that I'm kind of excited to try. I think it's called like Speedo Cappuccino or something. So <laughs> okay, well, really fun. What? Wow. It's because, <laughs> I mean, we do have bikini cappuccino places that I'm always just like, who is going in there? This is a little like more owned by people that are supportive of like sex workers from like a political or like activist mm-hmm. standpoint. The bikini kept, they've had like lawsuits and stuff. So hopefully this is like a little <laughs> bit more like, you know, self-actualized, I guess. Right. Well, I feel like every year Portland becomes obsessed with a type of food or a cuisine, like when we all lost our minds for soup dumplings. Do you uh, remember that? <laughs> I still love soup dumplings. Yeah, of course. And then there was birria. People were just like, have you heard of birria? And I'm like, yes, yes, we have. But what do you think is going to take over this year? So like b- my main caveat, I just want to say, is just really, really try to avoid referring to like specific cultures as trends when talking about food. But I mm-hmm. think that Something I'm really excited to see is that there are going to be a lot of Filipino projects that are going to be opening in Portland. We're seeing that specific food culture grow in the Portland restaurant scene, which I think is long overdue. And there are a lot of really talented chefs that are sort of leading the charge there, which I think is really super exciting. So we have sort of the aforementioned Sunrise and Magna project. Magna is also doing a Lechonaria in Beaverton, I believe. But I'm particularly excited about Shop Halo Halo, which is going to be a Filipino bakery that is opening in Southeast Woodstock. And I love Filipino desserts. They started as a pop-up kind of project. Um, but they're opening or they're their first brick and mortar in Woodstock, which is going to be really fun. Perfect. You were talking about pop-ups and carts and stuff kind of blowing up. And I think a lot of that, to me, has to do with TikTok. And this is a story I've made up in my head, but I feel like there are more (laughs) immigrant families that have started businesses and they have like one son or daughter that's really good on Instagram or TikTok and they go gangbusters because of that. You know, like I think there's that new Cantonese barbecue place off 82nd that's blown up right now. It's called Fortune Barbecue Noodle House. Yeah, totally. It's so, so good. I went right at the end of 2022 and their char siu, their duck is so, so juicy, just like super, super lacquered. If you're someone who likes Cantonese barbecue, it's a really good spot for it. And they have really good wontons too. I think that, you know, my order at this point is to get a big pile of the crispy roast pork, char siu, and a bunch of wontons, and I can take them home. But speaking to your point about TikTok, yeah, I mean, an immediate thought I had was Cully Central, very similar situation, where they kind of blew up on, on TikTok, and it was very much like one kid I think their kid was like, you have to get on TikTok and and they ended up doing it that way. And you can find them there. I love Cully Central. I mean, I know it's not new, but if you're in the Cully area, if you you want amazing Laotian street food or just like really good noodle soup, 
anything else that you're kind of excited for this year? Yeah, I have to do an honorable mention to something that's not actually in Portland. In Gearheart, it's like kind of a small Oregon coast town. Oh, I know where that is. Yeah. Yeah, right. There's going to be a wine bar and small plate sort of restaurant opening there that's owned by Ireland Baldwin. I heard about this. (laughs) Right. So the daughter of Alec Baldwin and then the musician RAC. They're opening this sort of cafe in the morning, wine bar. It's also kind of a boutique. It's got small plates. What? A boutique? They're just throwing everything in there. They're just like, and get some some scarves while you're at it. Yeah, why not? It's called Good Times. Good Times and Gearheart. Good Times and Gearheart. It really works. I think it works. Lots of really cool natural wines going to be there. Can I just pause you there? Natural wines. I'm just going to say it. A little overrated, but that's all. <gasps> oh, Brooke, I'm so sorry. To the heart. <laughs> Brooke, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like when people are just like, mm, I'd like an orange wine. And I'm just like, they're just leaving the skins on. Oh, I wish you could wow. see Brooke. Brooke is never coming back on this oh, show again. No. <laughs> I am a no, I For sure. Sorry. I would bathe in orange wine. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, point is, no, it's times. exciting. This is exciting because yeah, there's nothing to... on the coast, really. Yeah, I think in in that town in particular, nothing immediately comes to mind. It'll be really interesting to see. You know, celebrities opening a thing doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be great. The chef that they hired is going to be doing some cool wild food, so maybe it'll be really awesome. Mm-hmm. The one thing I'll say is that RSA made a playlist for the restaurant that is on Spotify that you can listen to right now, and it has become my soundtrack. I Wait, listen to R- it all the time. It's called Good Times. But RAC, it's the musician, the Portuguese musician? Yeah. Okay. And I just want everyone to know that this is Ireland Baldwin, not Haley Baldwin, which is what I originally thought. And I was like, oh my God, Justin Bieber is moving to Gearheart. I was so excited. <laughs> and then I got it all wrong. It was just another no. Baldwin. Unfortunately. Another not. Baldwin yeah. daughter. There are There's so, so many, many Baldwins. Baldwins. It's hard to keep track. And they track. have so many kids. <laughs> But I'm excited for this. I actually heard about this in passing and I was like, yay, it's something to visit. I hope that we get more of this kind of thing in the coast because it'll get more people out there even when it's not nice. Like I just want to go to Astoria and just hang out because there's cool stuff to do there, you know? Yeah. 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 There's some cool things that have opened in Astoria within the last couple of years too. You know, I listen, I could be here talking all day about (laughs) things that I'm excited about. And I would love to, but yeah. I will just have to have you back on because honestly, you great. kind of touched a little on food cart issues that I haven't even really thought about because that's just not totally. my world. And I kind of want to hear more now. And I'm just like, wait, let's talk about this because this is such a quintessential Portland institution. It's how we got our name for being a food city, you know? So it, hearing that there are issues, I mean, including with your f- new favorite place, the Ritz Carlton. Um, <laughs> I'm never going to live that down. <laughs> Listen, maybe it's going to, I think it could, it's probably going to be pretty great. If it's not, everyone can call me out. Oh my God. If there's a tap room, we're just going to go there and be like, this is pretty cool. There's beer, there's beer here. And that's the other thing. So many brewery food cart pod combinations that are coming in 2023. Yeah, And that's such a winning combination for a Portlander. Are you kidding? Like, I just mm-hmm. want to drink a beer and eat something out of a truck. That's like my, <laughs> that's how I want to spend a Saturday. Dude, that is the best like if we were in high school that is your senior year <laughs> quote i just want to drink a beer and eat something out of a truck brooke jackson <laughs> listen, yeah class I'm, of 2022 the <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no lie there absolutely no lie thanks brooke i can't wait to speak to you again about more food yeah absolutely and now for your microdose of news kind of literally this time Oregon started accepting license applications for those wanting to work in the state's new legal psilocybin industry. That means people who want to legally grow magic mushrooms, process them in a lab, or or provide them to clinics can start the process of getting approved. It will still be a long time before we start seeing these legal clinics opening up to the public, though. And don't get your hopes up for the shroom house to open back up anytime soon. Retail sales aren't and (laughs) never were a part of the plan unfortunately. Plus a bit more food news, it looks like a controversial ghost kitchen is going out of business. Homage Industrial Kitchen advertised about 75 different businesses on food delivery apps, but last month, Willamette Week published an alarming story about the company. Turns out the owner had a 2018 underage rape conviction, and the CFO had once stolen tens of thousands of dollars from other businesses. 
Now Homage is declaring bankruptcy and ending its lease. That's one Portland food biz I'm not going to miss. If you'd like to hear more about what's happening in the city, sign up to our daily newsletter, Hey Portland. I'll add a link to it in our show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Portland. If you enjoyed the show, share it with a friend, leave us a review. It'll really help us out. And also, I just wanted to shout out all the people reaching out and letting us know that they're enjoying the show. Thank you so much for listening. Seriously. Our lead producer is John Notriani. Our audio producer is Julia Fiaioni. Our newsletter editor is Rachel Monahan, And our host is me, Claudia Meza. Original music by Jen Conley and Steven Drizos. Additional music by Epidemic Sound. We'll be back in a few days with more conversations from around the city. See you at Slim's. <laughs>